On today's episode of MR Triton, we are installing a set of Light Fox 9 inch driving lights, some spotties on this ARB bull bar. Let's get stuck into it. So a good while ago, I installed this ARB summit bar and it's been awesome. Great bar to get. Now, what is missing from this bull bar? A set of spotlights. You know, living in suburbia, often you don't realize how dark it is at nighttime, especially this kind of year, autumn, winter sort of period, when it's quite overcast, there's no moonlight, there's no starlight, gets very, very dark. Now, firstly, a special thank you to Vic Off Road. They decided to send me this set of nine inch driving lights. So what the goal is here is we're gonna install these driving lights. And uh, yeah, if you're interested in getting yourself a pair, check out the link down below in the description. There is a link to the website and you can check out some of their cool products. They sell towing mirrors, driving lights, all sorts of other 12 volt accessories. So check them out. So let me tell you a little bit about these driving lights. They put out one Lux at 2,200 meters, 15,000 lumens, they're nine inches wide and very affordable. Check out the website. They come with a five year warranty. So unlike a lot of those other made in China brands, you've got yourself a nice long warranty in case anything goes wrong. They are waterproof and aside from that, that's a good looking product. That's a big spotlight. Never realized that I had a nine inch wide head, but apparently I do. Solid build, they're very heavy, very well put together. They've got fins on the rear to assist with cooling and also prevent cracking if you drive on corrugations. These are designed to stay together nicely on corrugations. They come with a black cover and a clear cover. Obviously there's a set of blacks and a set of clears. I've just decided to put one on each so I can display to you what they look like. Very solid, very hard to take these covers off. So I highly doubt you're gonna lose one on the roads as you go along. Now I'm not gonna really say how much these cost because the price is subject to change. And if you're watching this video a year after I put it out, well, who knows, prices go up, prices go down, whatever. They are a very affordable driving light when you compare them to products that are out there and for the performance that you apparently get from them it seems like a very reasonable price point so if you're looking for that kind of maybe entry level maybe slightly better than entry level driving light in terms of price and performance you want something that puts out a good bit of light for you to drive safely at night time and melt those kangaroos before you even get near them these are going to be the lights for you. So that's enough product placement here. What we're going to do now is we're going to get stuck into an installation. This video may be helpful for you if you want to install a set of driving lights on your Trident or if you're just genuinely curious. So let's cut our knuckles, bruise our hands, do some swearing and get stuck into it. We've got our mounting points here for our lights on our bull bar. What we're going to do as we did when we did the bull bar installation, we need to take off this plastic cover. We're going to feed the cable through behind the bull bar through the front grill around the radiator. Now, the wiring loom has these points that need to connect to your battery because that is obviously your power source. So we're gonna run the wire around the battery here, connect to your positive and your negative as required. We're gonna run it around the air compressor over here. And if we go around this side, there is a grommet. I've seen this uh, question many times on various Facebook groups. Where is the grommet in the engine made to get your UHF, your spotties, through the fireball. There's a grommet behind the DPF here. There's a little heat shield there that I actually cut my wrist open on once. You wanna feed your cable through the grommet in the firewall. Now there's snakes that electricians use, you know, a piece of plastic and you can pull cables through. I personally use an old metal coat hanger or a piece of fencing wire, shove it through the grommet, pull the cable through and you're good to go. Once we've done that, what we're gonna do is we're going to work out where in the console, the dash here, we want our switch to be sitting. And uh, yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So there for mounting the bracket to the light. What we've got, put our light here ready to go. Bracket goes on like so. Now when it comes to mounting our brackets, we're going to need to sit the bracket on top. The bolts will then protrude through the other side of this bull bar and you wanna get your nut, put your hand in and tighten it up. Luckily with this type of bull bar, the AB summer bar, you've got your little secret trap door here, which is clearly designed to help you install your spotties. So we've got our grommet. I'm gonna feed our cable through the bar here 
Get in there, you bugger. And then, there we go. We've got our light on the ball bar. We've got those retainers and those nuts on. We'll do the next light. Now, unlike this first bolt here that mounts the lights to the bracket, where if you only do that, you've got some play, the next lot of little bolts that we're gonna bolt to the bracket, the light frame here, the light itself, is actually threaded. So what you do is you don't need to put in a separate nut. And that's why I've left these to last. There's the thread. And you'll notice that when you first screw these on, there is a thread, but it hasn't quite been bedded in yet, if you know what I mean. So when you're first putting in this little bolt, it might take a little bit of extra motivation. Make sure you're not stripping the threads, but it may take some additional encouragement. All right, so spotties are mounted to the ball bar. The cables are sitting inside the ball bar, ready to go. We've left them a little bit loose, but kind of tight. Covers are on. What I'll do later on is I'll go out at night time in a nice secluded area, I'll chuck the spotties on with a bit of range and I'll adjust the height. That way I'm not blinding anyone that's way, way down the highway. You obviously want a sort of a downwards angle because with these bad boys, the output is so strong, you might shoot a bird out of the sky and that's not humane. So here is our wiring loom. It comes with the kit. This is not an extra. Believe it or not, there are brands who expect you to buy a wiring loom separately. Criminal. Plenty of length to go and feed things through. All we have at this end is some thinner wiring because this is all sort of going to go behind your dash and here's your on-off switch. Now if this isn't to your preference in terms of aesthetics, your wires are here, yellow, red, black. So if you want to buy a separate switch later on or if you've got an existing switch and you're upgrading an old cheaper set of spotties, you can unplug this switch and plug it into a different type. So on this loom we've got a fuse going from the battery, obviously you want to fuse as close to the power source as possible. That way if it shorts out, it'll blow here and not melt your car down here. You've got your relay ready to go, little hole so you can mount it. So you'll have in your engine bay in the MR Triton or other utes, because this isn't MR Triton specific, you can do this with any vehicle. You'll find a little bolt there where this fits nice and snug in a safe place where it's not going to get too hot and melt. And you just mount it nice and tidy. Looks pretty professional. So these connections, we're going to go through this area. Obviously, we've got a short and a long, so the short will be the closest one, the long will be the further away one. And we come up under the ball bar like so. This will feed through like so. We've got, oop, bit there. We've got our relay, which we'll put in a bolt here somewhere. We've got our positive and negatives, which we will connect to the battery and zip tie so it's not floating around. We don't want to plug that in just yet. We've got our fusing as well, that'll go somewhere. We've got our switch. So, cover's undone. So I've removed the cover here. What we now need to do is reach in in front of the intercooler here, find where the wires are, or cables are for the lights, and plug this loom in to the relevant sections. All right, so we've run it in past the intercooler. That's the closest one, that's the further one put it under the bonnet latch. Now the good thing about these connections is they've got a little rubber seal here. So once they're plugged in, you're not gonna get water ingress into the connection and cause corrosion and issues later on down the track. So the lights are now connected and plugged into the loom, mounted to the ball bar. We're going to work out where to put the relay and then we're gonna feed the cable through the firewall. You know you're about to have fun when you've got 12 inches of uh, socket extension on an impact. That's all connected. We've now got plenty of room here and plenty of slack also to connect up our 
little battery terminals and we'll zip tie our fuse somewhere secure as well so things don't get you know, flopping around. It is now time to do my probably least favorite part of this which is trying to feed this connection, wire, whatever you want to call it, through the firewall into the cabin. So we're now going to undo the cover in the driver's seat here. We're going to feed the snake in or the coat hanger in through the firewall. We're going to pull the cable back into the firewall. We're going to work out where sort of in this area we're going to mount the switch for the spotty. So put it all back together and connect up the high beam section. <laughs> Alright, it through. There we go. Nice and snug. So we're at the final step here. We've got lights wired up, running through, relay bolted down. We've connected up our power and we've neatly cable tied the cable all the way around. Now with this white cable in the engine bay here is our cable that goes through to the switch which is the on and off for the spotties. So I've run it through the firewall and as you saw we've connected it up, we've installed the switch uh, where your stop start will generally be if you have a higher spec model of Triton. Alright, so now that the installation is complete, let's have a look at how these bad boys perform. But before I let you go, I just want to say a big thanks again to Vic Off Road for sponsoring this video and sending us these lights to review. Make sure you check out the link down below in the description to check out some of their awesome full driving camping accessories. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, share, and leave a subscription down below, and we'll see you in the next one.